Hey everyone, I'm Arby Rocks, and welcome to The Little Intricacies, the show where we talk about your favorite pieces of pop culture and the small details that make them so great. If you're a fan of animation nowadays, you have it pretty good. The past few years, we've had some of the most well-regarded animated pieces of all time. TV shows like Gravity Falls or Steven Universe, or even feature films like Into the Spider-Verse or Toy Story 4. Back in the olden days, most cartoons were made to sell toys. You know, Transformers, Thundercats, G.I. Joe. But over time, animated television, while still of course trying to sell you toys, became much more focused on the stories you could tell. In the 90s particularly, animation really picked up. It was classic after classic. The Powerpuff Girls, The Animaniacs, Magic School Bus, DuckTales, all shows that were amazingly well regarded and were loved when they were in their prime. Now look at the landscape today, there's lots of good stuff to look at, you know, like Powerpuff Girls, or The Animaniacs, Magic School Bus, and DuckTales. Okay, this is a bit of a joke. Obviously, the 2010s were rife with good animated shows, and today there are still plenty of shows that I love going strong. But it's no secret that reboot culture is affecting the entertainment world today. There's that old adage that there are no new ideas and people are just constantly remaking things in an attempt to recapture that fire that once existed in a prior audience. Here's the thing though, most of these reboots range from okay at best to garbage. And even if the reboot is well regarded, it's possible there could be a large rift between the community that once liked the original and the one that currently fans its flames. But out of all these reboots I've been showing off in this video, one maintains itself as both a really solid love letter to its prior self and its creator's history as a whole, and that is DuckTales. For those unaware, in the 90s, DuckTales was a cartoon based off the four comic strip characters Huey, Dewey, Louie, and Scrooge McDuck, and all their wacky hijinks. It was based off the Carl Barks Donald Duck comic strip, and garnered a decent audience amongst all ages, with one of the most iconic theme songs of any cartoon. It was well loved, and it was one of the highlights of the Disney afternoon block alongside shows like Tailspin, Goof Troop, and Darkwing Duck. So when it was announced to get a reboot, I was skeptical. I think we all were. I'm on the younger end, so the original DuckTales missed me initially, but I had loved the DuckTales remastered video game put out by WayForward so much that I actually went back and watched the old cartoon. It was a new reboot with a cast full of celebrity A-listers. I thought I knew it was going to be terrible. A rush job for a cash out of nostalgia and it would get one season and be done but I ended up finding a show that was handled with such love and care by its creative team that I'm surprised I ever thought it was going to be bad. So today, we are now three seasons into the all new, all different DuckTales existence, and it has proved itself to be a worthy reboot. But it is not truly a reboot, or at least not a reboot of DuckTales. Characters from other properties have shown up left and right. DuckTales 2017 has proven itself to be a reboot of the entire Disney Duck universe. But this raises a particularly pungent question. When you have so many characters from so many comics, shorts, and even other TV shows, how do you make them all fit into one universe, one umbrella in which they can all work together? This is the little intricacies of DuckTales' disorderly dynasty. So, to start, before we even move off into the little intricacies of this little intricacies video, let's highlight a few big changes DuckTales made to the format of the show. First of all, and probably the biggest new change, is that this new form of DuckTales is now partially serialized. Meaning that while most episodes have a self-contained adventure within them, they typically also move a background plot forward each episode. So returning viewers can get the update on the long plot, and new viewers can just have fun on the adventure. This has been a larger trend in the animation industry, and one that really helps satisfy all viewers. Most characters have had their personalities and designs heavily changed from the original, some of which being references to the comics and others being completely original changes. And in this one, Donald Duck is actually a main character, which for those unaware, he wasn't really in the original DuckTales, I mean he was around every now and then, but he was basically a cameo in a show in which the main cast is his extended family. Weird, huh? But these are all things that anyone with a small knowledge of the original DuckTales could tell you from watching the pilot. The real question is, how do these changes allow for the entire Disney duck lexicon, or hell, even Disney as a whole, to fit into this one universe? Well, the answer is quite simple. By making this show serialized, the characters always have a larger goal in mind, meaning that they have an excuse to go and show off more parts of the universe, giving them the ability to include more characters and side stories and backstories. By giving the characters new personalities, you give them more individual motivations, thus once again giving us more stories. 
And by adding Donald, well, you actually bring me to another large point. The show has like 10 main characters, and one could argue that having too many characters dilutes the overall storytelling capabilities. Having this many characters also, once again, gives you more opportunities to explore the wider reaches of this universe. So basically, the creators have teed themselves up to do just about anything they want. I mean, we're currently on season 3, but I could see another 4 seasons at this pace. They've created so much material to work with. But that's neither here nor there. Now we know how they have the space to fill up this intertwined universe, but how do they create the intertwined universe? How do they intertwine the universes, so to speak? Co-executive producer Frank Angones calls this the unified theory of DuckTales, or using every part of the buffalo. He has said, if you remember DuckTales from the video game, we're doing that. If you know DuckTales from the comics, we're gonna do that. If you know DuckTales from the Disney afternoon, we're gonna pull that in. They wanted to create a cartoon that is universally recognizable. As long as you knew a little bit, you would be able to find some familiarity within the cast. I mean, even if you don't know much about the Disney Afternooniverse, I would wager to say that most people know about who Donald Duck is. So already from that statement, we have a large world in mind, but how do we make those characters blend perfectly? For other universe characters, they largely operate on a keep what works, reinvent what doesn't mentality. I mentioned earlier some characters having reinvented personalities or histories, and this is all in the benefit of creating that extended universe and making everything blend. For instance, let's look at the Three Caballeros. This is a pretty niche Disney film in which Donald Duck is accompanied by his two Latino best friends that everyone knows about, right? This film was made in 1944, so obviously not, but long story short, this film was about those three celebrating Donald's 10th anniversary and playing music. But with a premise that simple and a film which was pretty lackluster, followed by several equally as niche appearances from Jose and Panchito, they basically had to invent a new origin story for these guys to make any sense in DuckTales. So they reinvented them by having the three caballeros just be a band the three formed in college. In the original DuckTales, Magica Dispel is basically a comic relief character, being a a sorceress, but a pretty lame one at that. However, in the reboot, they make her into an actual menacing force with comedic moments. And with this menacing force comes a pretty spoilery but lovely twist on several classic DuckTales aspects. They even clear up both Darkwing Duck and DuckTales using the character of Launchpad by making Darkwing Duck a show within the show and making Launchpad its biggest fan. This reusing of characters in new ways is a great way to, one, weaponize nostalgia, making anyone who is familiar with the past want to see these new interpretations of beloved classics, and two, keep people watching, because if they recognize characters, I mean, they'll keep watching. Keep ratings up, and as sad as it is, they'll keep the show running, meaning they can make more of it. So, to review, by making DuckTales more story-driven, with better and more individual characters with unique motivations, they give themselves a need for the universe to be so big in the first place. And within that world, they use old characters in interesting new ways in order to keep audiences attached, and with audiences attached, they can keep the cycle up for as long as they'd like. And according to the showrunners, this is just the beginning. Much like how back in 1990, DuckTales was the launching point of the Disney afternoon block with other classic shows premiering in the same block after it, DuckTales 2017 aims to include these classic characters from other shows within its own show, having its first few seasons acting as its own launching point, so to speak. This is why I hesitate to call DuckTales 2017 a DuckTales reboot. It's more comparable to something like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. For comparison's sake, Thor Ragnarok isn't really based on any one Thor comic. It's like they took a little bit of Thor God of Thunder, Thor the Mighty Avenger, and Planet Hulk to form a completely new story. By that same token, DuckTales 2017 is as if they took a little bit of the original Carl Barks characterizations, several of the ancillary cast from the original DuckTales, a lot of small elements from every Disney afternoon show, and then a whole heaping pot of original ideas to make it stand out on its own. I love this show. I love DuckTales. So much so that I use the moon theme from the video game to intro most of my videos. Seriously, if you doubt any of what I said, watch this one guys. It's a bit on the made for children side, but for anyone who grew up watching these characters, you won't be disappointed. And if you don't want me to be disappointed, you can subscribe to RV Rocks, like this video, and comment about your favorite change from the DuckTales reboot.
If you enjoy these deep dive comparisons between the reboot of DuckTales and the original show, may I recommend you the channel Seanicus. This guy is a huge inspiration to me and is a huge Disney duck nut. He can give you any information that you would want to know and more. However, before you do any of that, I've been RV Rocks and thank you so much for watching. See ya!